All right, well, check this out. Just bought something that's gonna make our life a little bit easier. We just got back from uh, Shaver Specialty Services. Picked up this Halverson HWP 120 skid steer mounted firewood processor. So this is a self-contained firewood processing attachment. You scoop the logs up, it cuts them and splits them all in one unit. You can mount it right on the front of just about any skid steer. Don't matter how old or how new it is. So I will uh, put a link to uh, the Shaver Specialty Services YouTube page because that's one of the reasons why I was able to find this dealer. I mean, I found him on YouTube. They're only about an hour away from me and AJ's a real good guy. So he's got a lot of videos explaining how these work and different models and all that. So go check their channel out when you get a chance. But uh, yeah, so let's get this thing unloaded and see what it's all about. Shop down and give this thing a whirl. Maybe we ought to. Yeah, it be okay. You know that feeling like when you're a kid and you get a new toy? Yeah, I really couldn't resist. So, grab this pretty big split piece of wood that I had out by the stove. So, let's uh, run this through the uh, processor, see if we can figure this thing out. That's pretty cool. Let's put that into four nice sized pieces of firewood. All right, well, it's been a little while since I've 
done some work with the uh, Halverson wood processor, but it's the next season here. Really only ran it for a couple weeks last season, but uh, so I probably run about uh, 10, 15 cord through it. And I'm ready to finally set this up the way I want it. So right now it's set up like you would buy it right out of the box where you hook it up to your skid steer and run it through your skid steer controls. However, this works, but not for me. So what we have over here is a crane remote controller. So we've got this receiver box, box here, bunch of wires, basically all these functions. So what I want to do is I want to set it up so that this box is hidden inside the uh, processor's body and it'll be set up so I can run this machine either from the skid steer controls or remotely like this. So the reason why I want to be able to do this is I want to be able to set in the excavator and run the processor controls from the excavator while not having to be in the skid steer basically. So the reason behind this is when the skid steer mounted processor is mounted on skid steer, you have to physically scoop each log up with these little forks here. A little bit annoying. Hard on the undercarriage of the skid steer because you got to constantly twist and turn. The way this will be is I will be able to sit over here with the excavator. The skid steer will stay in one spot. I will be able to run every function of the processor from the cab of the excavator. This way, if like, so for example, if you get a log that's got like a, a branch sticking out of the side of it, sometimes it'll get hung up on here, it'll get hung up on here. This way with the excavator, I will be able to grab this log, set it, twist it, turn it, whatever I need to do, get it in place from the cab of the excavator. Another thing that happens sometimes, sometimes obviously the, the pusher tray here is fully extended. But sometimes a log will drop in here and it'll drop in here this way. You can grab it with the excavator then. I'll be able to kind of manage this machine a lot better from the cab of the excavator than you will from the cab of the skid steer. So that's kind of the plan. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this cover off here, get down into where our wiring harness is, which is right here. I really wanted to just get another one of these plugs and do it that way. But I think it's gonna be best to actually put that receiver box down inside this cavity here. And that way everything's self-contained. So I won't have to really work with anything. All I'll do is plug it in skid steer and basically go to work. So let's get this off. All right, so in here is where our valve body's at. And it looks like this is our main harness here. Comes in here. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this and splice it in here. All right, so we got this color sheet here. So we got our wires here. These are what control the solenoids. Now we're running on JCB here, so, but all these colors are the same, basically. So this is just your pinout guide. I mean, every one comes with this sheet, but, so. We're working here, so we got red is our power. Black is our ground. Purple is 
runs the tray, pushes it open, and blue closes the splitter. Orange and green run your your clamp, and yellow runs your saw. All right, it's kind of hard to show, but we got this fox mounted up here. It's got this isolator spring there, so. Got all of our spaghetti wires here. We got our guide here. So now the next thing to do is basically just cut these one by one and hook them up the way they're supposed to be and that should put us in good shape. So I'm not a real big fan of using these but I think this is how I'm gonna do it. And just for the fact that I can switch, if for some reason I don't like the way the function is set up, I can switch the terminals around and change which buttons do which because I was thinking about it, it's like well if you're sitting in here using the remote and you're looking at it this way well this you want the tray to go back this you want the tray to go forward but now if you're sitting over on this side over the excavator you might want to change that around so we'll use these and if they fail well then we'll hopefully by that point know how we want to run it and be able to crimp connect it properly so all right, we're gonna use these and we will connect one to every one of these wires and then we'll just hook our spade connectors on our receiver box and that'll be that. So normally I put a little bit of dielectric grease in these as well. It kinda of helps everything, so. All right, they're all hooked up. This one here is gonna be for this button here. I tied that one in because I wasn't sure if I wanted the saw function to be this button or this button. So when I start running it, I mean, let's make it split, let's make it uh, come back. This runs the grabber. This is my saw function. I figured, you know, you're gonna be running the table back, so you're gonna wanna saw down when the table's back. So that, that makes more sense from a ergonomic standpoint. These buttons, I might have to change these, not sure yet, but let's, uh, let's get, let's get to here and let's see if it works.
drive here. So let's see what this works. Right now we're on the table back. Table forward. Rub, rubber down. Run the table all the way back. it seems to work right all right well it's kind of a rough day out it's currently raining and very very damp it has rained all night and most of the yesterday but I uh, figure might as well try and process up some wood here and kind of show off how this remote controlled Howerson wood processor works so currently uh, I have the four-way wedge out of it we're just gonna be bucking up these logs. Uh, what I have is a pile here of smaller pieces or ones that I cut with a cone splitter. So they're already quartered up into small enough pieces. So really no reason to make little kindling pieces when I'm feeding the outdoor burner. and lift and picking logs up with your skid steer. For one, 
one, you're wearing out the undercarriage. Two, you're wearing out your drive motors. And three, you're wearing out your tracks. And it's just, it's just hard on the machine. I mean, you can mount these on an excavator too, I guess. But I don't, I don't think that'd be very efficient. So this one here, we got this split at the end. We're probably going to only end up running some of this through. We really could probably split this one. So this, in this case here, I'm not going to let go of it because I want a nice square cut. So we'll run our saw. Still run our table. Get that log out of the way. Run your saw again. We probably could have split this one, but... So we're running an outdoor burner, so. Alright. So that's basically how this thing works and has been set up for me. Um, I'm really happy with this thing so far. Uh, does everything it's supposed to. I kind of wish I would have gotten the bigger model. I think it'd be the 140. I mean, I don't really think I could justify, justify buying the 150 for just personal use but the 140 would have been nice because it is a little bit heavier duty as far as log capacity goes but um this thing this works just fine for what i need to do and these are pretty decent sized pieces of firewood which is what i like to have i mean filling out their burner i fill it two or three times a day in the winter so go through quite a bit of firewood but anyway so uh yeah if uh if you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, this is fairly simple to set up like this, so be more than willing to help any of uh, you who want to do something similar. But uh, thanks for watching and we'll uh, catch you on the next one.